in the hood with it. Welcome back to the Collective Clips where you already know mm, we get it in. But before we get it in, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Ding. Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directed in the direction of the dope content I am kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support, man. We're going up on this channel and it's all because of you. And for that, I could say I'm very humble, brother. <laughs> right? So do you guys got legs? Because we got a whole lot of shelf life with this, man. Welcome back to the Adventures of Superwood. And Roach, I call bullshit. Roach, I call bullshit. Right? I call bullshit on Roach. But at the end of the day, man, he was the homie. We had our time to shine. A lot of people have been asking me, hey, are you still in contact with Roach? Fuck no, I ain't in contact with that baboso. So I I don't even know if he's in contact with humans. That baboso was on a great one. He was outer space. Hey, brother, guess what? What? I'm fucking high, brother. <laughs> he used to be on it. White boys got good white. I'm like, white men? You said it right, motherfucker. Right? He was just on some different shit. But he used to tell us a whole bunch of stories. So I remember one day we were kicking back at his pad. And his mom, she was making some type of rice pilaf that smelled like straight of dairy. It smelled like straight shit, right? She was like, do you motherfucker? Not the Mexican. Do you guys want some rice pilaf? Right? He's like, hell yeah, mom. Put a little mild salsa on it. Right? He was different. But we're all kicking back in his front yard. It's me, Dwarfwood, Ricky. I don't want to hear, I want to hear about actives. Right? So we're going to hear some active stories today. And one of them is Roach did time with heavy hitters. Now, I don't know. Look, Roach has been in prison several times. Laced up from the face up. Like this real talk. Hey, Wes Watson ain't got shit on Roach. They might. They just might have hooped probably the same amount of items. Like Roach is really on his convict shit. So Roach would be like, hey, listen, brother, uh, what I'm going to say right now stays here. What goes on in my house stays on in my house, right? I'm like, yeah, like the power, fucking all night long, fucking bright lights. Like you guys don't turn shit off. Brother, those are meant for safety and security reasons, right? And so he was a crazy wood. But he got to telling us stories about doing time with heavy hitters. Now, I myself have been in contact and when I say heavy hitters, man, guys that are, their names are well-established, stories are well-known in prison. You know, as you can look at the thumbnail, you can see a couple guys. Well, at one point in time, one of them was considered a very heavy hitter, kind of went out backwards, man, chose his destination in life. And the other one continues allegedly to be a heavy hitter, man, and is very well-respected and has my utmost respect because that's just what he's earned, you know? Um, but I've done time myself with some guys that were pretty well-known, would trip you out, guys whose resumes... Brother, they go from here to the Rio Grande, right? They got fucking crazy resumes. Um, but according to fucking Roach, he was around the heaviest of heaviest hitters. Okay? So he tells me a story about Little Germany. And the reason I could verify this story and say that what he's speaking on or what he spoke on back then is truth is because i done interviews in the past with a guy who was an affiliate of a prison organization. And you guys could tap into those, man. Um... He talked about the same facility, the same pod in, of course, what was Pelican Bay at that time, the shoe, before the shoe changed to what it is now, right? And there was a, a spot in the shoe called Little Alemania, Little Germany. And that's where they had a lot of the heavy hitters for the AB, a lot of woods, a lot of Nazi lowriders. And according to fucking uh, Roachwood, he was there. He did. I did time in Little Germany, bro. Oi, motherfuckers, right? And I'm like, okay, so what happened? So... I'm like, didn't much happen because at the time you were doing shoe time, you know, I, I always questioned how he got to be associated with these type of guys if he wasn't doing an indeterminate. See, I wasn't under the understanding or even clutch enough or gamed up enough to understand if you didn't do an indeterminate, you could be around these type of guys. You know, I always thought you had to be fucking validated to even be in association with them guys, for them guys to even give you the time of day. And when I'm talking about them guys, I'm talking about the leadership of the prison organizations, these guys that are really running, running this shit, you know. But according to him, he got in real close proximity and real close. Uh, uh, he got a, built, built a good relationship with a dude who was once a Nazi lowrider and became a B, right? So he's like, hey, brother, they don't fuck around, brother. He was like, they even told me yeah, you got to trim your mustache, brother. It was at that point I knew this was some heavy shit. Right? And so... He wants to tell us a story about him doing a pegada while in the shoe. Now, from everything I've heard, I've never been to the shoe myself. So everything I've heard, um, it's pretty hard to do a movida like that. It's pretty hard to do a prison hit, to do any type of thing. 
because then you don't have close contact with anyone besides what would be your your uh, your bunkie, your cellie, right? But there were times where doors would pop accidentally and bottles would get off where they were mad at. Now, I know for a long time, the Norteños and Sureños, man, they went through a thing called where they would hold a defensive stance where if the door popped on accident, they didn't get off on each other. They were trying to further their goals and maintain what they had, their program. But there were times, man, when there was guerra and it was on site and get off where you're mad at. And this, according to Roach, was one of those times. So I'm going to tell you the story he told me, but I call bullshit. I call bullshit. Well, he was obviously there because he knew the name of this fucking spot. Like I said, someone else told me the exact name. He was like, hey, I was in, in Little Alemania, Little Germany. There was a gang of whites there. And that's why they called it that. The Southerners called it that. And so when he said, I was in Little Germany, brother. At first, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, right. You know what I mean? Hitler was there too, huh? You were locked up with him and fucking Stalingrad or whoever, right? But come to find out, he was telling the goddamn truth, right? And so here's, here's what happened. That particular day, we got all pumped up and what we did later on. But let me tell you his story. So... He says he got real close to a guy that was functioning, like at a high level. And that's where he got all his game from. Now, I will tell you the truth. Roach, besides being high as a motherfucking kite, was definitely laced up when it comes to wood politics and tactics, right? He'd be like, brother, give me a fucking Allen wrench. You know how I know that? Because I'm white, brother. I'm white, right? And so I'm like, what does that Allen wrench have to do? Tell me Allen's a Mexican name. Nah, it, Alejandro. Stop trying to make it yours. Right, so he was different, but um, he told us the story about spearing someone in the oil or in the shoe, right? And that this guy fucking there was someone that this guy had fucking basically marked like, hey, the guy's no good. He thought he was still in good standing. He was fighting for his stance within the Wood Collective, um, but they had already deemed this guy unnecessary and no good. And it was up to Roach to prove his worth. It was his time to shine. He was doing a 24 month shoe. And he just happened to get in close proximity to the guy who was his channel. And he was told to handle something. So this motherfucker went into the intricate details of making a spear out of newspaper. And a fucking thing dipped in coffee and shit. And all kinds. Of, come to find out, man, um, from one of the homies, it wasn't that easy. I have a homeboy that was not Pelican Bay. I've asked dubs about Pelican Bay. And they, although spearing did happen, um, a lot of the guys, when they come out, come out for showers, they were already up on game laced up. They'd come out with their fucking towels around their neck or their jumpsuit around their neck to protect themselves. But according to Roach, I hit him right in his fucking eye, brother. <laughs> he told us this crazy outlandish story about spearing someone and how they couldn't prove it was him. I said, no, well, listen, Roach, I, 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 can I ask you a question? Can I get at you? He's like, yeah. fucking hey, brother, you can get at me because right now. My guts are bubbling thinking about that shit I took and put on the tip of that spear. I'm like, okay, uh, so, so you hit him in the eye, right? He's like, you fucking A, I did, right? I'm like, okay, uh, and was he being escorted? Well, that particular day, what, shut the hell up. Everybody knows in the shoe, you got to get escorted by one or two officers, right? Preferably two. Um, they're going to fucking escort you. No, brother, you don't understand. They let them just walk out. Now that could be the case. Cause I have seen videos and pictures where guys are just coming out of their cells, going to the yard. It was pretty shocking, but it is what it is, right? So he tells me, no, nah, brother, th th this is what the fuck happened, brother. They popped his door, he came out, shot his ass, that was it. He went back in, right, with a fucked up eye. Later on, he told medical, I can't see. They came, they took him out of there, they did an investigation. No one said shit, because we don't say shit, even though his eye smelt like shit, right? I'm like, okay, so that's your story. That's the way you're going to tell it. Then later on, he went to say, and then the officers tackled me. And well, well, how the fuck they tackle you if you went back to a cell and no one knew? So I called bullshit on his story. But come to find out, man, there was another wood that I later on ran into that verified his story. He said, no, brother, I was right there. It really fucking happened, dude. Right? This dude, he had a, a proximity for saying, or, or uh, uh, he was prolific in the word dude. Everything was dude. Man, let's go get some tacos, dude. I'm like, all right. Dude, did you see that? Yeah, I seen that. Dude, dude was fucked up, dude. Dude. <laughs> I was like, these whites are different, man. I got to stop hanging around with them. Because one time I was with my old lady. I was boning her. I was like, dude. She was like, what? Right? I was like, oh, what? Right? No diddy. Um, but trip out. So he tells us this story and it gets us all pumped up. And he's talking about he was around a lot of heavy hitters. A lot of dudes from different prison organizations. So, of course, I asked him about the NF members. Because, you know, I've always been one to inquire into the history of the people that I once functioned under. And I wanted to know exactly what it was. And he was like, them fucking dudes, brother. Let me take my shirt off, right? When you talk about them fuckers, right? He was like, them, 
They get a lot of respect, brother. They get a lot of respect. He's like, I did time with that brother Skip, and I did time with that brother Corny, and I did. He started naming a whole bunch of names that I knew he knew about, and he was like, you know, them guys are very militant and malicious and uh, mischievous, right? The three M's, brother, and I'm not talking about the Mexican mafia. I was like, oh shit. Then he started talking about, you know, willings and dealings he did um, with, of course, other prison organizations. He knew his shit, man. You know, these guys he talked about, um, the way he his demeanor was and his voice was very respectful. You know, and then so I asked him, I was like, so when Vatos would fall off, when they drop out, like, what happened, bro? Because I never was there. I tell you guys stories about four yards, three yards, places I've been, but I can't tell you these actual stories about Pelican Bay um, like Dubs can and others that have done, done time there can because I was never there, man. I was never validated and I just never caught that shoe term, right? I did some oil time extensively and I did do a shoe term in Corcoran, but not in Pelican Bay, okay? So I can never sit there and say I've been to the Pelican Bay shoe. That's a, that's a lie if I said it, right? So I asked him, I said, so what would happen? Like, what was the, like, the talk of the town when Vatos would like fall off? He said, well, brother, we just didn't fucking talk about it. It was none of our business. I said, so what happens if a wood fell off? Well, then I thought there was a lame, brother. He was a fucking lame then, and he's a lame now, right? He was strictly against. And I was like, but, I, but I'm not active. But you're different, brother. See, because, because you sell a lot of cocaine for me. Right? So it was just, that's how, that's how his mentality was. It was crazy. He had love for me. I had love for him. But I always watched Roach close. Because, you know, you got to watch people that are on dope. Because they'll just cat out. They'll trip out, brother, are you wearing a fucking wire? Give me some coffee, right? <laughs> He'd be all fucked up. Um, but trip out. So Dwarfwood's there, Ricky, we're all tripping out. My cousin's captivated by these stories. Tell me about Skip. Tell me about Skip. Right? He's all fucking, you know, that, that's the old Skip, right? He's all fucking infatuated. And I'm like, okay, I'll tell you a story about Skip. Serio? Yeah. He'll fucking kill you if you act stupid. That's it, right? Don't let him see you ever do this weird shit because he's going to check you, right? Give that about the respect. He deserves it. And that was that, right? Um, so we're all kicking back and everyone's all fired up, pumped up. That's right, Roach. See the big homie, man. He was in Pelican Bay. He's right. Say it again, brother. Say it again. Big fucking homie, right? Also, I said, also, you were one of them. Well, I'm not necessarily, but in this circle, motherfucker, I'm seasoned. Paprika, right? I'm like, ah, here we go, right? So he's like, fuck all this fucking prison talk. You guys want to go to prison? I was like, nah, not necessarily. Not, like, that's not my plan. My plan today was to go home and bone my chick, but I mean, what are we trying to get into? Let's make some fucking feria, and if we can make some feria, some feria, yeah, I'm not a fairy, bro. Feria, brother. Let's go get some money. We'll go get some tacos, a little mouth salsa, and uh, I got this connect we can burn. I'm like, for reals? He's like, yeah, brother, but uh, yeah, he's not a lightweight. You know, he's not a lightweight. He's a real heavyweight, and I said, well, wait, so we go from stories of heavy hitters to robbing a heavyweight. Yeah, but he ain't one of them. I said, all right, well, let's go. Fuck it. His mom's like, how'd you like the rice pilaf? He's like, mother, it smelled like it tasted. She was like, oh, it smelled good. It smelled like shit. There's your answer. Come on, guys, let's go. And Dwarfwood's, hey, don't leave me behind. Don't leave me behind. I want to rob someone, right? So, of course, we pull up to this fucking spot out there in Modesto. That's all I'm going to say about that. The outskirts, right? And, of course, this motherfucker, uh, uh, Roach, he had these old school binoculars. Old school ones from the 70s, from the Indiana Jones movie, right? Bought the guts his binoculars. He's like, brother, yeah, I see them. There's about three of them. Dwarfwood, go handle your bizwax, right? Dwarfwood's like, why me? Why me? Richard's like, whoop it, I'll do it. Fuck it, come on, little midget, let's go. Right? I'm like, oh, shit, no, no, no. You're sending a J cat and a cat that looks J. Don't do it, right? I'll do it. Come on, Roach. He's like, no, brother, because they know me. They know me, brother, and if they see me, and, uh, and they will, they, they'll kill me, brother. I'm like, it doesn't matter, bro. We're going to go lay some shit now. I think that kid is going to do it. He was like, no, nah, brother, I'm going to have to choose option number B. And what's B, right? He looks at me and he goes, you go, bitch. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. Why did I ever let this white guy talk to me like that? I let him get away with the few. He was the homie. And at the end of the day, he was the connect. And if I fucked that off, then I couldn't pay my rent. So this guy gave him certain liberties. So he's like, let's go, right? This motherfucker put his hands down and the things were suctioned to his eyes. Come on. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, nah. His eyes were all big at the end of them. He was really spun. So he's like, brother, they have a gang of dope in here. We're going to come up. I said, wait, wait up. There's no money and shit? Brother, dope is money. <laughs> I'm like, all right, come on, let's go. So, of course, Dwarfwood's like, what do you want me to do? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, look short, right? Come on, let's go. So we got, and Ricky's walking like this. What, bitch? What is this radio set? Because I'm going to get off. I said, no, it's a gang of white dudes. We're going to go on there. 
We're going to steal a lot of shit. We're not going to let Roach know, and then we're going to divide it when we get back. What are we going to steal, primo? Fuck! What do you mean you're going to steal, brother? Oh, fuck, right? They, I can't do nothing with these guys. I say, you know what? In fact, I'm going to wait in the car. You guys get whatever you want. I don't even want my cut, man. I just want to go home. Dwarfwood's like, can I hang out with you? I said, nah, bro. I don't. You, you. The other day, you just jumped across my knee. It was like you bounced from one fucking knee to the other, and it was rather fucking unbecoming of you, man. I don't, don't call me gay, brother. I'm not calling you that. I'm just calling you fucking short and funky, right? So anyways, Roach is like, fuck that. We're all in it, brother. If we have to tie people up, let's go. So we go over there, and these guys are jamming in a truck. There's three dudes. They're leaving. Man, are you kidding me, right? My cousin's like, I'll fucking kick the door down, whoop it, boom. He kicks that motherfucker and we went in there. There was a chick in there, right? Have you ever seen the movie Scarface? Remember when that chick fucking pulled up the cuete? It's ugly as fuck, Marta. Remember Marta? Well, they had their own Marta, but she was a skinny, tweaked out white version of Marta, right? Looked like the Crip Keeper. Motherfucker walked in, I swear to God, she said, get behind me, Satan, get behind I said, oh, no. I took off running, like, I'm out of here. Roach is like, wait for me, bro. She fucking seen my face, right? He had a mask on with these fucking binoculars stuck out. She don't know you, right? Bro, she knows the Swazi on my fuck behind my ear, right? Dwarfwood, can't mistake him. He's a little wood, just, he, see, I, with us, it's, with him, it's, because he's like, barely running, right? So fucking, of course, fucking my primo snatches him up. He's running, whooping, did we get caught? Yeah, we got caught, right? So we go run, hide out. This chick calls these dudes to just come back. When I looked in the house, it looked like an abandoned fucking house. There wasn't shit in there anyways. So, of course, we go back to Roach's house. And he's all stressed out. Brother, they're fucking going to murder my family. I said, well, it's just you and your mom. So, and my nephew up there in Arkansas. Uh, man, what am I going to do? That's why I don't do shit with Mexicans. You guys always fuck it up. I said, it was you, bro. I came up with the idea. How was I supposed to know one of them fucking dirt bag, dirt legs was going to be there? I don't know, brother. Right? Yeah, I, I, I mean, what's the shelf life on the place? Can we go back? Well, we might just fucking have to before they come here. They know me, right? So we went back. Let me tell you what happened. Roach is like, I'm just going to go knock on the fucking door and just say hi. Like, I'm just coming by to visit. So he was like, if you notice me, go, help, then come running, right? <laughs> so we're all waiting right there in the cuts by the car. Like, I'm like, this is fucking nuts, right? Let me tell you what happens. Hey, brother, right? They're like, hey, it's that fucking roach, right? Gang of big old fucking woods come out. I'm like, oh, this motherfucker had us robbing fucking the, the Hell's Angels or something, right? So we go over there. We come walking up. And Roach is like, yeah, man. You know, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the homies called me, man. They told me something was going down over here, brother. We just came. I brought reinforcements. I brought a couple of essays. My primo's like, I don't fucking know some of my A couple of NAs and, uh, you know, a couple of fucking uh, shut the fuck ups, right? And these guys didn't even recognize that the chick was like, yeah, it was, it was a little short midget dude, right? Luckily, luckily, we left Dwarfwood because he's easily recognizable. Then one of the fucking dudes says, don't you got a, don't you got a little homie from Sacramento, a little midget? He's like, yeah, brother, but I ain't seen that fucker in a long time. It's been a, sh no, it's not been a short time. It's been a long time. <laughs> he's only trying to explain it. We kicked back, man, and I ain't going to lie. We barbecued, chilled out with these dudes. I was fucking surprised. The whole time I was looking like, they're going to kill us, right? Roach is looking at me. He's like, brother, if you see anything, you already know what to do. I said, yeah. Tell me and my primo are going to run. You're on your own. This is a white thing. We're not in it. You know? But quietly as it's kept, we kicked it, chilled with them dudes. And Roach is so scandalous, he stole the gold ring. He's like, brother, I'm going to have to take something. This lick ain't just for the fucking frivolous, right? So uh, later on, man, he pawned the ring, got 60 bucks out of it. and was like, see, I told you I was going to make money. What about us? We put our life on the line a gang of times for that guy. Anyways, back to him hanging around with heavy hitters. I will say this to, the, to those of you that ever run into Roach, if you ever run into him in Merced, he's really been where he said he's been. I used to question it. Ah, oh, it's just a tweaker white dude just fucking talking to talk. But he was really around people, right? So he was on a yard when he got, because Roach ended up ultimately getting validated. Um, he was on a yard. He was running wood. Um... They did a pegada, man, and Roach ended up getting charged for a murder case, um, which ultimately he beat. They couldn't prove it was him, but he did get charged on it. I think it happened like in Calipatria or so. It was somewhere down south, Southern California. And he got he got ended up getting validated. And uh, according to him, he's one of them fellas, right? I can't confirm nor deny what he was or what he is, but he definitely was around some heavy hitters, man. And that's the true story. So with that being said, man, 
You never know what you're going to get with these white guys. That's why I don't, I, you, you know, when I hang around white people, especially ones that live that lifestyle, they're in the game like that. They're off that good white brother or drinking that good coffee. Um, I don't ever deny their stories because a white man could tell a hell of a story, right? But nine times out of ten, it's going to be the truth. People just, they overlook it. Oh, that's just a crazy white guy. Fucking, no, no. If you would have met Roach, yeah, he was a crazy white guy, but that motherfucker told the truth. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming. And remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the strive to struggle, the struggle to strive. If you guys want me to continue uh, telling you Superwood stories, leave a comment. Hit a number one. I'll keep it going, man. Thank you. Like and subscribe and support everybody, man. The gun. Bang, bang.